good. Good morning. Bit better weather today. We're going to start by shaking and feet apart and shaking the wrists, shaking the hands. And put the elbows into it. And the shoulders. Okay, we're going to bend the knees, put the arms swing backwards and forwards. And one arm forward, one arm back. Turning the waist, most important thing. So they're keeping the shoulders loose, keeping the arms loose. It's the movement of the waist that makes the arms go up and down. We're going to take it around the waist. Going to wind that up. Again, it's the waist making the movements of the arms. A little bit of input from you. Up to that point where you'd have a brooch. So that's your lung, lung one. I'm going to bring the toes up. You see in the rear view mirror there. And the waist, set the toes up. It's important that you let your shoulders go. I don't want to be punching them up to your ears. Just letting them relax. Let your arms be loose. And basically, you're throwing them around your body. Okay, you put one foot forward. Remember to keep hip width apart. You're going to bend the front knee, so bending the front knee, causing my arms to move. Pushing the brakes on at the front, pushing off from the back. So we've got an empty foot and a full foot. And we've got that head on suspended by a piece of string. And change legs. So make sure your toe doesn't, uh, you need us to go any further than your toe. And the break. Okay, then step up, feet together, and pop the hands on the shoulders, rotate and touch the elbows together at the front. This is from as high as the ceiling today. I'm not, <laughs> unless I've grown a lot. <laughs> the joys of being on the Zoom, eh? And reverse that movement. Let the arms come down. And gently take the head from side to side. Back to centre, ear to shoulder this time. Do 70% effort at all times. Make sure you clean the stretch down the side of the neck and across the shoulder. Back to the front, down, and gently back. So don't press too, too, too far back, just a little bit. One more time. 
and back to center. We'll take a deep breath in when the shoulders up to the ears. Hold your breath. And let go. Breathing in, hold it. And breathe out, let go. Breathing in. And let go. Okay. I'm going to circle the waist. And the other way. Okay, pop the knees together, feet together, push the hands above the knees and push the knees back. So you should feel the stretch down the back of the legs. Bend the knees, push back. Okay, you're going to rotate the knees, circle them one way and the other way. Okay, stand up and rotate the ankle. So circle the ankle inwardly and outwardly. And you shake. Again, the side inwardly. And outwardly. And give it a shake. I'm just going to adjust the screen a little bit. See more of the mirror than you do with my garden. Okay. Whew. You do take a step out. So your hip width apart. Bring your hands together in the front. We're going to make a circle. The circle will go forward and back. As you do that, You'll find your weight goes onto the front of the foot and transfers to the back of the foot. So keeping the hands opposite each other. You should feel the difference in the change to the front of the foot and the back of the foot. Okay, so keep going. And stop there. You're going to turn your waist, doesn't matter which side you're going to, but you're going to keep your knees facing forward so that your waist is turning to the corner as far as you can go around comfortably. You can do exactly the same thing. So pushing outwardly, bringing it back in, circling to the corner and back in. So you should be aware that one hip, one quad, this bit here, the groin, will be open and the other will be closed more. Back to the centre and the opposite side. So again, it's my waist that's turning, my knees are staying facing forward and I'm circling toward the corner. It just shows you how, how your waist movement should be during the forms. Okay, back to centre. This time we're going to go around horizontal. So the circle comes all the way around. We're making a big circle. I always get my horizontals and laterals muddled up. making a circle go to one side again it's the waist if you see my carry on putting my belly hand in my belly button this is what's happening it's the same thing that happens when we do silk reeling so the waist is moving from side to side but the knees are staying facing forward it's this part that's murky okay 
So you can do that one way and you can train and do it the other way. But we're going to be doing something you can practice at home. We're going to do a circle up the front. Just opening everything up. Transferring the weight from the front of the foot to the back of the foot again. Pushing it out, taking it back, going forward. Okay, I'm gonna have a little shake. Have a look at some legs, maybe mine. What I'm gonna do is gonna take a wide stance and we're gonna bend one knee. Doesn't matter which knee, some of you may have one knee that's better than the other. So we're going to be doing both, but the important thing is, is we're going to be doing snake creeps down afterwards. It's this knee and the toe is in alignment, okay? So, and don't take your knee any further than your toes. So I'm just going to put a little bit of bend in that leg. Keep the other one on the floor flat. I'm going to change sides. I'm just bending the knee, making sure it keeps in line with my toes. See me in the rear view mirror, just warming your knees up for you. If you want to, you can go down lower, depending on how athletic you're feeling, or you can just stay quite high. The important thing is that that knee is in line with your toe. Okay, so just warming them up a little bit. Okay, so last week we looked at, oops, looked at high pat on horse, and then we went into right heel kick, box for years. Turned round, heel kick, left. So starting off my face, so that's 12 o'clock. I then ended up at one o'clock, then ended up at 11 o'clock. So my left heel is facing 11 o'clock, and this is where we're going to single width. So the difficulty is I'm gonna to have to turn around and do it the other way for you, okay? Otherwise you won't see anything. So we've gone from the heel kick, I'm going to put my foot down in T-step, put my other foot down completely, and I'm going to turn on the ball of my foot. And I'm going to make a foot hand. So I'm going to focus on my feet first of all. So down here, a bit more. I'll see you in the mirror. You'll kick with the left foot. My left foot is then going to touch down to T-step, and I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn on the foot so that my foot is then facing, which would be nine o'clock. Okay. So we've got eleven o'clock. Belly faces nine o'clock, and then we're going to do go to T-step. We're going to step out. The important thing is when we step out is that the back foot, my left foot, so this is as it is in the form, is going to be in line with the right foot. So you're going to bend the knee of the right leg, and this back foot is going to be in line with the heel. So if there's a line, which there is here, we'll have one foot on the line, and the other one would be behind it. The right foot is going to be slightly at an angle of off, off center. The right knee is going to bend in line with the right foot, which is what I was talking about a moment ago to make sure that you're in the right place. Otherwise, you'll end up damaging your knee. So, from the front, this is what's happening. I'm stepping so that my foot is behind, it's in line with my foot, the front foot behind. So it's not standing opposite each other, it's quietly behind, okay? So, the 
right knee is going to bend, you're going to put all, all your weight down into the right leg. And depending on how, how high you can be, how high you can go, is what happens next. So I'm just going to demonstrate what you need to do so that you can suss out whether you can go high or low. I suspect most of us, most of us will be a low, not going too low. So I'm going to push my knee over the toes. And what I would have to do is turn my waist, turn my foot, turn the back foot, and then I'm going to have to spring up and put my right knee up, which is why you need to be careful what you're doing. Because if you get down too low, then you have to have a lot of jumping to bring your knee up. So I'm just going to demonstrate what it is. So we're looking at the feet at the moment, so don't worry too much about my hands. That's what we have, this is what is required, if a snake creeps down. So we're going to just do this together. I'll do this side, so you can do it with your right hand, and I'm in T-step. My left hand is hooked, and the hand is underneath. Step out, it's just going to look at the feet at the moment, okay? So your left foot is in the line with your right foot. Heel. You're going to turn your waist to look at your left foot. Then you're going to have to turn your foot. Back to the weight forward and turn the back foot. Push the heel inward so that your front foot is at slanted. And you have to come up with your leg. So what's happening here is someone standing in front of you, you're going to go down low, you're going to come up between the legs and you can actually flip them over or do some horrible things if you wish to. So this is why we have to change position. So making sure whichever leg you're using, because we're going to do on both sides, you're going to use, make sure that that back foot the knee, the knee is over the toes, and the back foot is in line with the heel of the other foot. Okay. So it will make more sense when we put it all together. But this is what you need to do. Make sure that knee's in line, turn the waist. So my belly, belly button is here. I'm going to turn my waist as much as possible towards that flat foot. Then I'm going to turn my heel. So we're pointing to 12 o'clock. Bring the heel slightly in towards the center, give you a little bit more space to work with. And you're going to bring your hand and your foot are going to come through and up. Not an easy thing. Okay. So we look at that because we're going to do it both sides. So I'm going to do this side. So this is your right hand, it's a hook. I'm going to step out. With your left leg, we're just going to do the legs, so don't worry too much about me. My hands, turn the foot, turn the back foot, knee comes up, golden rooster stands on one leg. They all mean somebody. We do the other side, so for your left, left hand, left foot, is you put your weight on. We'll step out and again make sure the knee and toe are in alignment. Turn the waist, turn the toes, turn the heel, turn that in a little bit more. Gonna come up knee. Okay. So in order to get there successfully, we need to ascertain how flexible your knees are and also how much weight you can put on it and if you can actually rise up. So most of us, I think, will be doing this quite high. So I'm going to concentrate on my arms now. And we'll put it all together. So whichever side we're doing, because it happens on both sides, we're going to make a hook. Hand is going to come to the forearm. As I step out, my palm is going to face down, coming across the body. When it gets to the side, you're going to turn your waist. 
you're going to put the back of the hand down the trousers. Okay. Turn the waist, palm faces outwardly, so the back of the hand is on the trouser seam. So the idea is that this knee comes along the inside of the trousers. When you get as far down as is possible for you, you're then going to turn your foot flat. Now this will be one, two, three, so the hand comes along. Back of the hand goes down the trouser seam. So this knee is bending over the toes. My waist is turned, so my belly button is facing is towards my left foot. Turn the foot, turn the back foot. So you end up in a bow stance. The fingertips facing the sky. The other hand, the rear hand is making a hook. It's coming behind. So it comes, makes a circle down. Do someone a mischief with that, okay? Hook, circles down, honk. Front hand ends up facing fingertips to the ceiling. So it doesn't matter which side you're doing it on, you're doing exactly the same thing. So this is my, your right hand, step out, comes along, belly's turning, comes down the trouser, turn the foot, turn the back foot so that you're in a bow stance. Fingers up. And have a little rest, shake. So this is quite complex because I don't know who can get down far and who can't. Um, so if you're going down far, just remember you've got a long way to come back up again. So if you go down further, you can take your hand further towards your foot. And into the front foot, lift up. And so it's the second part of the movement, but we'll just focus on what we're doing at the moment. So I'm going to do this from the last movement, which we did, which was on facing 11 o'clock. It's a heel kick. I'm going to bring my foot down. Turn my foot to face the mirror. T step, right hand is a hook. Bend my knee, put the weight into my right leg, step out. The palm faces down. I turn my waist. The back of my hand is going along the trouser sleeve. If I get this to the furthest point I can manage, I'm going to turn my foot. Turn the back foot, bring the left hand up towards the ceiling. Plonk behind with the hook of the right hand. Okay. Do that again. So, left heel kick is to 11 o'clock. I'm going to turn my right foot toward the mirror. Step into T step. Step out. Bend that knee, hand's going to come across, turn the waist, turn the left foot, and the hand is coming down the trouser seam. Ends up with the right hand hitting behind, the left hand in line with the leg. So, we need to have this hand in line with the knee. Do that once more. So heel kick. Right, so this is how it is in the actual form. We've done a heel kick to eleven o'clock. To T step. Bend the foot. T step. Step out. Bring the hand down. Palm facing the floor. Turn the waist to the left. Back of the hand goes down the trouser seam. As far as you can, turn the foot, bring the back foot to 45, hook behind, fingertips are facing up. So I'll do it from this side. Okay. 
that's quite a lot to get into your um, system. There's a lot going on there, so it will take a, a while to uh, do that. I'll just demonstrate it once more. And it's coming down the waist, my belly button is turning. Remember not to let this knee come in, keep it out. Opening up your groin like we did in that exercise a little while ago. Hand is coming down the trouser seam, as far as you feel comfortable with. Turn the foot, turn the back foot, keep the hand. So this is a nice attack into somewhere you don't want to be aiming for really. So the elbow and the knee are in alignment. Okay, have a little shake. Shake your knees, bend them a little bit. You probably try to warm up the knees earlier. Mine making a nice uh, grinding noise there. Okay. So I'm going to do one facing this side. Have the foot behind and comes down down the trouser seam. So there's a slight bend here, but what you must be doing is going here, bending too far forward because someone's going to go plonk on top of your head. So, so if the tailbone will stick out a little bit. This knee, as I said before, don't let it disappear from alignment and don't let it collapse in. So, one, one step, two, three, way down, four, five, six. So, making sure that you're not going to go down too far is essential. Because the next minute, at least, I say we've got to rise up. Um, that snake creeps down to his golden rooster, stands on one leg. It's um, quite considerable hope. So, we've got all the way down, all the way up. One leg, whichever side it's going to be on. We did this on both sides. The heel is going to come in toward the midline. So, you're turning your foot out at an angle. Bend the knee, put all the weight through it. The back leg and the hand are going to come up. So it's a bit like having a piece of string attached to your el elbow and onto your knee. So what you don't want to be doing is ending up with a knee or a hand up before the other bit comes up. You need to have them come up together. All the way it's in the left foot, the right hand is coming up, my right knee is coming up. So the other hand presses down. Okay, so we've done press down, bring the right leg through, all the way up. That's in the front. Bend the foot, bend the knee, put the weight through it. Hand and foot. Okay. So the elbow points down. If you're flexible enough, you can get it in line with your knee and the fingertips face up to the ceiling. And so, someone I was looking at yesterday, last week suggested this is, could be a cockerel's comb. Okay, so you're going to put those movements together. And I'll count them out as much as possible so see that you can see me. So we're going to go from so belly button is facing 12 o'clock, then changes to face 11 o'clock. Okay, so 12 o'clock will be straight, straight in front of you. 11 o'clock is obviously to the left. So we've done a kick to the, with the left foot to the corner. I'm going to put the toe down. The heel down, 
And the front foot, right foot to face forward. You make a T step and a hook. And the hand is by the inside of the right hand. And step out with my left foot. Remember making the toe and under the heel of the right foot. I turn my waist slightly. My palm is down. My palm then goes on the back and hand of the hand goes onto the left trouser. Turn the waist. Slightly bend, making sure that right leg is in line with that right foot. Just bend slightly, get as far as you can, turn the left foot so it faces six o'clock. Turn the back foot, 45 degrees, the left hand comes up, the right hand hits behind. Okay, come back a bit so you can see me. The heel of the left foot, which is in front, is going to turn inwardly. So the ball of the foot will turn the heel in. The left hand is going to press down, come to the side of the left side of you, the right foot. Comes through up on the right knee. Oh, this is a good workout, isn't it? <clears throat> okay, so 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Heel kick was to 11 o'clock. In the toe in, turn on the foot, forward foot, face. Make your hook, make your T-step with the left foot. Step out with the left foot, in line with the toe, the heel of the right foot. Press down in front of you. The waist is going to turn, make sure that right knee is pushed out. Left hand is coming along the trouser seam as far as is possible. When it gets as far as it can, you're going to turn the front foot. So the point of the front foot faces six o'clock. Right hand is going to come through, left foot is facing six o'clock, the left hand comes up, fingertips pointing to the ceiling, the other hand hits behind, and the right foot is at 45. So you're going to bring your left heel now, it's coming to the midline, so you press down, step all your weight into the left leg, bring the right hand up. So from here, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So you're coming into T-step. T-step. Step out. The left hand is now on the hook. And then across the body. Keeping that left leg pushed over the knee. Right leg this time. This foot is going to push to the midline. Step it all the way in the right leg. Step up. Turn around, it's my left hand this time. Step out with the right leg, palm is down. I reach my waist, my, uh, my groin, I turn my waist. Back of the hand comes down the foot, leg, turn the foot. Step the right leg in towards the midline. Come through. Oh, I hope you got that. I'm sweating. Uh, okay, so that takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of work because there's an awful lot going on and it's all about timing. So feeling where you've got one foot empty, one foot full, um, putting the weight through, so you need to sink into the leg before you bring the other one through. Um, and for your own body, it will just depend on your own body really. I mean, if you are not very agile, you can simply turn. Okay. So you don't have to go all the way down. But the important thing is you get the movement, the gist of it really. So you want to be doing one high. It's fine. Come here. Come here. That's fine. So it just depends how active and how mobile you are. Um, but again, the main thing is you need to make sure your legs are strong. So again, that standing and holding the tree, hugging the tree posture is the one that makes your legs strong. And something you can do for about five minutes and build it up every day. And as much as you can, 
You can do it watching the TV, doesn't matter. Hold the ball, change the ball postures. So we do that actually. So I'll just review those movements last time. So whichever way you're going to be doing them, left or right, because you do actually need to turn around on this one. We do it both sides. Or you can go high. And it comes to it at the same time as the arm. Okay, if they were attached. Okay, so building up the legs down to the tree, tail of your uh, tailbone down toward the floor. I have a piece of string on mine. No, it's at the front. <laughs> anyway, just imagine yourself as having an anvil attached to you, your knees out. So as if you're going to sit down, but you're not going to sit down. Okay, so you can stand like this. You can bring the arms up if you're hugging a tree. The longer you do this, the more your legs will strengthen. Turn the palms away. I'm just giving you some different options here. You can have your hands going in and out as we're doing the salgon when we're finished. Have your hands going down to the floor. Just imagine that it's the rotating of the knees. So you're a bit like a tea towel. You're screwing up the tea towel, making it stronger. Talking. Okay, that's what's making your legs work properly, making your muscles stronger. And then you can take your hands over the ball. Change the board. Push your hands out to the sides. And push the hands up to the sky. So what we're going to do to finish off is just hold the board. Make sure there's space under your arms and your tongue is to the roof of the mouth and your knees are pushed out with the tailbone going down. So the lower hand is going to push up high. The other hand is coming to the side. And back to the center, change the position of the hand. So breathing in, the lower hand goes up, the other hand goes down. So breathing in, breathing out. Getting that stretch in the body. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Back to center, hold the ball. The lower hand goes high, other hand pushes to the side, fingertips facing toward the screen. The other hand, try to get the hand over the top of the head. Okay, so the ball changes over each time, breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. One more time, breathing in and breathing out. Okay, you're just going to place your hand on your belly. Ladies, right hand down, gents left. Let's take in through the nose and inflate the belly. And breathe out through the mouth. Breathing in, inflate the belly and breathe out. Okay, let's take a deep breath, bring the hands up, breathing in and breathing out. Two more, breathing in and breathing out. Last one, breathing in and breathing out. Okay, have a all over shake. This is my head, that's probably a good thing. All over shake. Ooh. And I'll see you next week. Take care.